Hello, I'm Elder Smith. Today's subject will be about infant baptism and why primitive Baptists don't believe nor practice it. You see, a lot of the churches out there are under the belief that if you are not baptized and you end up uh, and you end up and you die before you're baptized, uh, you'll you won't go to heaven, or the chances of you going to heaven will not at least be as great as it would be if you were baptized. But that's just not the truth. Baptism by water does not wash away sins. It doesn't really affect you at all. Do primitive Baptists believe, practice uh, water baptism? Of course we do. But we don't believe it has any effect over you and your salvation with and your relationship with God. It affects your relationship in the sense that it's a public display of faith. It it's a way of starting a new life here on, here on earth, but the baptism has to be done right. And even then, you're still just as much of a sinner afterward as you were before, for it does not remove sin. Primitive Baptists also believe in baptizing the old way, not the way of the sprinkling of water over the head, but through the submersion of the body completely in water and bringing them out. You see, when God sets ordinances uh, for the church, you got to treat those ordinances the way you would the ordinances of the Old Testament. The things in the Old Testament were symbolic for things that were yet to come, such as the sacrificing, representing Christ dying for us, the, the baptism, When you are being laid into the water, that represents going into the grave because we die, die because of our sins. Being lifted out of the water represents coming out of the grave, being without sin, being perfect. It symbolizes the resurrection. You don't get that symbolicness from the sprinkling of water over the head. Of course, infants, or specifically babies, you cannot submerge them completely in water. They do not know to hold their breath. You, but you can't. But they're not old enough to be baptized. Are they? Are they going to go to hell if should they die before they're baptized? Absolutely not. That's not how God works at all. The baptism isn't meant to prevent us from going to hell, but it's to show us, but it's to teach us that we are not. We're not going to hell. Christ died for us. He fulfilled the law for us. Now, a lot of people say, well, you still need to repent. You still need to believe. You still need uh, to accept Christ. You need to be baptized. Well... Well, let's think about that for a moment. When John the, Bapti John the Baptist uh, baptized people, what was the one thing he said before Jesus came and, ha and uh, had John baptize him? Here's what he said in the third chapter and the 11th verse. Now, this is John the Baptist talking here. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance... But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist was pretty much saying, I may baptize you with water unto repentance, but this water is only to represent what is yet to come. Now he that cometh after me, the he that he's speaking of, it being Christ... When he baptizes us, he baptizes us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's the baptism that counts. That's the baptism that actually has an effect over us and over our lives. That is the, per that is the baptism that does, in fact, make us perfect in the end. Maybe not in the ways of the flesh, because if the baptism made took away the, the sins of the flesh from our flesh, death would be an impossibility. 
but it still has a change over us that affects us to where when God looks upon us, He looks upon us through His Son, and our sins are covered. When I was younger and I first read the Scripture, I, I always felt uneasy about the, about the baptism with fire. There's nothing about it that sounded appealing to me. What did that mean? What was the fire? It almost sounded uh, it almost sounded like something that'd be painful. Of course, I took it literally at the time, at the age I was at. But I there is another scripture later on that talks about how we are as gold tried in the fire. When you try gold in the fire, it removes all the impurities and it comes out more pure than it was before. That's what the being baptized with fire means in the end. When he baptizes us with the Holy Ghost, he is giving us life. He is making us new creatures made in Christ. He is making us so that we, like Enoch in the Old Testament, can walk with God. Because when we are born into this world, we are born dead into it. We, because though our hearts beat and we are walking around, we are born cut, cut off from God and because of our sins. But when He baptizes us in the Holy Ghost, He's touching our hearts. He's giving us life. He's making us new creatures made in Christ. And through that, we have the life needed to walk with God. And even more, baptizing us in the fire, because we are as gold tried in the fire, our impurities are being removed. And we're coming out pure, without, with our flaws and impurities removed from us. That's the baptism that counts. You won't get that from water baptism. Well, like I said, primitive Baptists practice water baptism. We're not against it. But you got to do it for the right reasons. If you're doing it under the belief that it's going to remove sins from you, that's not how it works. And that's another reason why we don't believe in infant baptism. We don't believe... It's removing the sins or it's saving our, our babies. We believe that if they are saved, they are saved through what Christ did for them and nothing else. Just like we are saved as adults for the same reason. Of course, a lot of people could argue with this. And here's a... And You'll notice this about me. Uh, I'll, I'll point out the scriptures that people will often use to contradict these beliefs. Because I, I, I believe in uh, explaining uh, these scriptures. I, it's only fair because a lot of people read these scriptures and they say, Well, hold on, if you believe it this way, how come this scripture says this or that scripture says that instead? Which sounds like they're contradicting the uh, doctrine of the primitive Baptist faith, but they're really not. I'll use this scripture as an example. This is Jesus here talking uh, in the 15th verse of the 16th chapter of uh, the Gospel of Mark. And he said unto them, Go ye into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, that scripture sounds like it contradicts pretty much almost everything I've said. Well, hold on, you're saying that baptism doesn't save you, but it says those who are not baptized, those that don't believe, they, they're going to be damned. You're sa so if they choose not to believe, if they choose not to be baptized, they're not saved in the eternal sense. How can you honestly believe, Elder Smith, that uh, you believe you're saved no matter what, and that there are people that have uh, been born into this world and have gone to the grave without being baptized, that any of them could be in heaven? 
you got to remember what baptism they're speaking of. When Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized is saved, well, is he talking about water baptism? Or is he talking about the baptism John the Baptist was talking about? The baptism with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And understand, if you are, if you are one of God's elect, or I'm starting off uh, things a little backward here. If someone believes, that means their heart was touched by God. If their heart was touched by God, then they have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. And God's only going to touch the hearts of those he has elected, those who he has chosen to be his children. He isn't going to touch the heart of someone he hasn't chosen. And if God hasn't touched anyone, if God hasn't touched a person's heart, that individual, for that individual, it is impossible that they will believe. They, there's no way to believe in God or believe in the truth or that, to have Christ in your heart if God hasn't touched your heart first. So if, so if you do believe, your heart was touched by God, that means you were already saved. And if that's the case, you, rather if you were baptized with water or not, that part right there for what I'm about to say is irrelevant at this current point on the subject that I'm touching on right now. But because you were already baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What significance does uh, uh, water baptism have? The significance it holds is not for your eternal salvation, but it's your public display of faith. It is you showing that you are ready to start your new life in the church, your relationship with God here right now as you live. You do not need to be baptized to be saved. That kind of baptism just shows you're showing everybody you're starting a new life. That's how primitive Baptists practice, uh, primitive, uh, practice uh, Baptist, baptism, and that is... Um, when someone who has never been a part of the Primitive Baptist Church announces they want to become a member, we, we vote them in, and then we take them outside, and we baptize them in the water. It is a special moment. When I say... When I said it was irrelevant, I'm not. I didn't mean that in the sense that it's not a special moment. It's not something that's heartfelt. It truly is. It's truly a joyful moment. But it's not meant to save you from your sins. Only one can save us, and that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who fulfilled the law for us. We are saved through him, through what he has done for, for us. He is the one that gives us the true baptism. Another reason why we don't believe in infant baptism is because there's something else. Even if, bap even if babies could uh, hold their breath to where you could submerge them, there's still one thing that needs to be done before you go through the water baptism. Peter says in the book of Acts that we are to repent and be baptized. When a baby is too young to know from right or wrong or to even do anything for, the mat for that matter, except for do what babies do, how can a baby repent? of anything. Your bap baptism should be something you ch choose to do. It should be a personal choice of yours. But when you choose to baptize a child or that's too young to make that decision, you're taking that choice away from them. That's not baptism. 
That child is not being baptized because their heart has to be in the matter. Their heart has to be in the matter. They have to be old enough to make the decision, and they must repent and be baptized. If you force baptism on on someone that's too young to even make that decision, that's not true baptism. Not even true water baptism. And when they're so young that you can't even submerge them, that you have to sprinkle water over their head, their head and say that that's baptism, well, all of God's works are supposed to have spiritual symbolic meanings. I described what the old baptism was symbolic for, being laid in the water, representing going into the grave, being lifted out of the water, coming out of the grave. What's symbolic about the sprinkling of water? There's nothing symbolic about it. That isn't scriptural baptism. That's more of a modern day baptism people have come up with so that they have a safer way of baptizing babies. But another thing to think about is I challenge all of you who disagree with this, read the New Testament from beginning to end and show me any part, show me any scripture whatsoever that showed a baby being baptized. And if you can find it, let me know where it is. Everybody, as far as I've read, everyone that's been baptized was baptized because they chose to be baptized. They, it was a choice they made. If you're fearing for your infant's uh, salvation, fear not. It was taken care of. It was taken care of before they were born. It was even taken care of before you were born. Because remember, it wasn't the water that died for our sins. It was Jesus, the only true, the only begotten Son of the only true and living God. And whether, whether they are baptized with water or not, what matters is if they are baptized by the Holy, baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. And God has the chosen set time when He does that. And it's always different for people. God does not have a set age. He doesn't touch people's hearts at when they reach a certain age. He touches their hearts when He has chosen to do it. When your heart is touched, you are born again. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's for God to take care of, not for us. If someone wants to be baptized, if they want to repent and be baptized with water, then that's great. That's incredible. That's a joyful event. But don't, but don't think it makes a difference in your salvation. Don't come out of it in the end thinking you're a better person because that's exactly what this happened with Cain and Abel. Though they didn't, have, uh, they didn't practice baptism, but they did practice sacrificing. Which, and uh, the reason Cain's offering was not accepted is because he actually believed the sacrificing removed the sins. As for Enoch, or Abel, Abel's offering he knew had no effect on him. It didn't make him a better person in the end. He did it because, as a public display of faith, just like baptism, he did it because he knew what it represented. He understood why that offering was special. It, the offering was special because it represented Christ. Water baptism is special because it represents what we get to go through thanks to what, to our Lord and Savior for what he had done for us, a special, joyful thing. But if we start turning it, if we start turning baptism into it's what saves us, that takes away from how special it is. Because we're taking credit away from Christ and putting it in the water. 
Let's not do that. Don't fear for your child's sal eternal salvation in the sense that you feel the need to baptize them before they're old enough to make that decision. That it comes down to choice when it comes to being baptized with water. As far as being baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire, that's a choice that God makes. And he's never wrong. So if, some, so if someone has to make the choice on that, I'm glad it's God that makes that choice. For there's no better one to trust, to put your trust in, than God himself. I thank every single one of you for listening. And remember, study to show yourselves approved, to rightfully divide the word of truth, and put on the whole armor of God and fight the good fight.